Hi viewers, in today's class, I am going to discuss on the concept of photodetectors, also called as photodiodes. As we are discussing this in optical fiber communication, I mostly insist on the uh, photodetector concept related to optical fiber communication. So these are also called as optical detectors. These are mainly used to convert optical power to electrical current. So here, in optical fiber communication system, what happens? We will have a receiver section, a transmitter in between uh, uh, all the fiber communication system and finally a receiver section. This uh, photodiodes, what we are going to discuss now, play a very key role in optical receiver section. So today's class, we will discuss about such a type of two detectors. One is pin photodiode and the second one is avalanche photodiode. So, we are going to discuss the differences uh, that exist between these two detectors. So, basically, so there are certain uh, parameters which are very, very important for a photodetector, such as responsivity, quantum efficiency, response time. Based on all these requirements, two types of photodetectors are designed. We will see now. So, the first one is pin photodiode. In the name itself, uh, we can say that P indicates P type, N indicates N type and I is the intrinsic reason. So, this is a simple uh, diagram related to pin photodetector. So, pin photodetectors are basically operated in reverse bias voltages. And these reverse bias voltages are of very, very lower range in pin photodiode. Usually, they are applied in just between 5 to 10 volts in case of pin photodiodes. See, a very low range of reverse bias voltage. So, here in this actually what happens, we will discuss. So, whenever the photon or light is focused on this intrinsic reason, what happens, we will see. So, first of all, P and N reasons are heavily doped reasons, whereas intrinsic reason is a very light doped material is used here. So, in between, what happens in this reason, highly resistive uh, thing exists here. And when we start applying the reverse bias voltage across these ends, and uh, we, in, we just project some light energy on this intrinsic reason, what happens? Automatically in here, the depletion width starts increasing and the capability of light absorption also starts increasing. So, with the effect of these photons, what happens there? These incident photons gives up some energy and start exciting the electrons in this from valency band to conduction band. So, automatically the electron hole pairs are created here and these start traveling across this ends. So, that we call it as a photo current. So, this photo current is collected across this reverse bias circuit uh, just like a resistive load will be connected here and this current as it starts moving across these parts automatically it is collected across this load resistance which is called as photo current. So, here actually what has happened? We have incident the light energy, that light energy is converted into the electrical current. This is what we require in a optical fiber receiver section. So, here pin photodiode is capable of converting a light into electric current. But up to how much level it is capable, we will compare it in terms of avalanche photodiode, right? So, here the range of uh, reverse bias applied is very low, that is just 5 to 10 volts only. Now, coming to the section of avalanche photodiode, here what happens, we will see. See from this diagram, this even avalanche photodiode is also operated in reverse bias condition only. But the difference is, here the range of voltage is, that is reverse bias voltage is from 20 to 400 volts. See the difference. So, here the range of reverse bias voltage is very high. And this avalanche photodiode is operated on high reverse bias condition. Here the process of avalanche multiplication will be taking place. Whenever the light is incident, that is photons are incident here, immediately what happens inside this is the electron hole pairs will be generated. And these generated electron hole pairs with high energy, they traverse across this region. 
that effect creates an impact ionization in this circuit. So, because of that effect, what happens? The uh, photon energy is converted into the electric current. They are emitting outside in the form of a current. So, compared to pin photodiode, avalanche photodiode is operated at very huge reverse bias conditions, right? Now, uh, if you compare the circuit point of view also, the circuit appears to be very, very simple. This is a little bit complicated compared to the pin photodiode. Now, the second point is the responsivity of a pin diode is limited. So, here what is the meaning of responsivity? Responsivity is nothing but it is the ratio of output current to the incident optical power. So, what does it mean? So, uh, for example, how much amount of optical power we have uh, focused or uh, imposed on this region and how much of it is converted into the electric current. That ratio indicates the responsivity of a pin diode. That means how it is responding to the input optical power. So, the unit here is ampere per watt. Uh, say for example, if you take the uh, semiconductor material as silicon, here we can go with germanium also, just I am taking silicon as example. For this, here the range of uh, responsivity for a pin photodiode is around 0.4 to 0.6 amperes per watt. This is just an example I have given. So, the responsivity of pin diode is limited. The reasons also I will uh, give you with in comparison with the avalanche photodiode. So, the same thing as you come with the respect to the avalanche photodiode, what happens we will see here. So, in avalanche photodiode, so the responsivity in avalanche photodiode, if you go for the case of silicon, what happens we will see. So, for silicon, its range is from 80 to 130 ampere per watt. See the comparison between both of them. Here, the responsivity of avalanche photodiode is having very, very larger value. The reason for this is, it is having a very large internal gain. The gain is due to the avalanche multiplication effect. In this, what happens is avalanche multiplication means the electron pair gets multiplied in a huge range. Because of that, large amounts of currents will be flowing out. So, the, convert, uh, the responsivity of the circuit also will be very high. So, in comparison point of view, we can easily say that the response of avalanche photodiode is larger when compared to the pin photodiode. Next point is sensitivity. See here, the sensitivity is very low in pin photodiode. So, what is sensitivity? Sensitivity is nothing but it is a minimum detectable optical power. That means, for example, uh, for uh, say for example, if you are focusing or uh, if you are imposing some 1 watt of optical power, out of that 1 watt, how much is being detectable by the circuit? So, that is called as sensitivity. So, that sensitivity is very low in pin photodiode. Its range is just around 0 to 12 dB in case of pin photodiode. Whereas you come the same thing in case of avalanche photodiode, it is around 5 to 15 dB. See and compare these two. In sensitivity point of view, we don't find much difference, but comparatively, uh, avalanche photodiode is more sensitive. That is, it is capable of detecting more amount of light. This is due to the already I said avalanche effect. It is having more uh, efficiency point of view. So, the next comparison is regarding to sensitivity related to temperature. So, pin photodiodes are less sensitive to temperature. That means they do not deviate very fastly regarding the temperature changes. But if you come for the case of avalanche photodiodes, they are more sensitive. Why? Because already we said that here the high reverse bias voltages have been applied for this avalanche photodiode. So, the electron hole pair ionization rate is completely dependent on temperature here. Because of that, whatever the temperature changes are occurring, 
that directly affect the avalanche photodiode. Next, spin photodiodes exhibit low noise condition, uh, uh, low noises, which uh, minimize the interference or distortion type of problems that will be existing when a weak light signal is imposed on it. But if you go for the case of avalanche photodiode, always here the level of noise will be very high. Here, different types of noises also will be existing. The reason is very simple. Always this avalanche photodiode's nature is random. That means it is not a, like a static nature. Continuously it is varying with the effect of avalanche multiplication effect. So here the noise will be also very high. Then this type of nature of photodetector leads to additional amount of noise compared to the pin photodiode. Next, conversion efficiency. Conversion efficiency means nothing but it is a capability to convert light to the electric current. So here the range of conversion efficiency is 0.5 to 1 ampere per watt. Here one more point I need to focus is the range of operating wavelength. Here it will be around 300 to 1100 nanometers. In this range, the conversion efficiency is around 0.5 to 1.0. The same way, if you come for the case of avalanche photodiode, the range of spectrum is 400 to 100 nanometers, 1000 nanometers, and its conversion efficiency is around 0 0.5 to 100 amperes per watt. So, in these particular wavelengths, the uh, conversion efficiency will be uh, very moderately, it will be done. The response time of pin is half of the tough avalanche photodiode. That means the, uh, the amount of light that is incident, how fastly it is being able to convert into the electric current that leads to the response time. So, it is half of that avalanche photodiode. Here, as it is half means automatically this will be double to that of the pin photodiode. So, compare these two, we can say the response time of avalanche photodiode is quicker. And the cost point of view, this will be very low, but here it will be very high. Seeing the circuit itself, you can understand why it is low and why it is high. Here the signal to noise ratio is poor, but here it is a better value. The detector circuit is very simple here. Why? Because for pin photodiodes, you need not provide any additional uh, or external circuitry or supporting circuitry is not needed. But you, if you come for the case of avalanche photodiode, here we need to provide an additional circuitry like uh, temperature compensation circuits and all these things are needed here. Why? Because the reason is already I said this is a temperature dependent device, uh, circuit. So again we need to provide the external stabilization circuit in regarding the temperature changes. And also here a very high voltage is need to be provided that is high reverse bias voltage. For that also some additional circuitry is required here. Temperature stability is better as you uh, take the case of pin photodiode. But if you come for the case of uh, avalanche photodiode, the stability is very poor. Here the gain is low or even we can say zero gain or negligible gain. But here the gain is very high. More gain is provided in the case of avalanche photodiode. So in comparison point of view, based on the practical requirements, some cases they will be going with avalanche photodiode and some cases we will be going with the pin photodiode. So, cost-wise, construction-wise, all these uh, noise uh, bases, pin photodiode is preferable. But compared to faster response and uh, uh, if you go for the case of uh, more conversion efficiency, in those cases, avalanche photodiode is a better choice. So, that's depending on practical requirement. So, these are the major differences between pin photodiode and avalanche photodiode. Thank you.